Welcome back to the U Sports Report, everybody. This is our college rundown section. College, you know what that means. Final Four, March Madness is in full effect. Tyler Ortega, the dad master, is here <laughs> to give you his Final Four picks. Tyler, great games this weekend. Great, great games this weekend, guys. Uh, you know, a few upsets. Uh, mainly Kansas going down to Villanova as well as uh, Virginia going down to Syracuse. But I have another uh, little headline here for you from the weekend. <laughs> Just got one word, Buddy. Mr. Heald? Buddy was on fire. He played Oregon this last weekend. Let's go ahead and check out what he does here. Nice little step back three in the corner, tells the defender, eat that. And Spangler. And then there's Buddy with the nice little follow-up. That one was a little bit uh, more difficult then you would normally see falling away to his left, putting it in with the right. And here you see Buford getting turned away Solid early in the first half. Solid right there. It but, seemed like healed was too much for the Ducks to overcome. Absolutely. Uh, Buddy just shot the lights out. He finished with 37 points in this one. Wow. Uh, you know, we'll talk about Buddy just a, a little bit more in a while. But when you look at this Oklahoma team, the firepower. The firepower was there. Spangler's feeling it. The Ducks just had no answer at all at all. I think this was maybe their only highlight of the night. They, they got, could not pick up that intensity whatsoever in this game. They got overwhelmed. I think it's because Oklahoma's a battle-tested team coming out of the Big 12. Mm -hmm. Big 12, yeah. They play the Kansases all year. They play, uh, they play the Iowa States. They play the Texas team. They play West Virginia, who's now in the Big 12. So, uh, you know, a lot of the Big 12, and well, I just got to pause for a second. Look at this shot. That was that shot was from I think it was from like Florida, yeah. and they're playing in, in Kentucky here. Yeah, <laughs> that was Steph Curry range, Buddy Why Hill, just shot. the truth. Absolutely the truth. You know the Ducks did what they can to try to come back in this game, but too much heel, too much shooting from Oklahoma. They ride into a Final Four appearance for the first time in a few years. Oklahoma looks strong coming in. Oklahoma looks very good. Uh, you know it's really just a toss up between the four teams left at this point, but I mean. What can you say about Buddy, man? That Buddy, guy is just not on fire. Enough. One of the not most enough. prolific scores we've seen since Jimmer Fredette and uh, Steph Curry, possibly. Yeah, absolutely. I got to say. Uh, but we had some more good games for you this last weekend. Let's start with Syracuse and Virginia. The 10 seed taking on the 1 seed. Many people would argue that Syracuse doesn't even belong in the tournament. Well, Syracuse would do everything they can to basically tell everybody you could take that argument and go somewhere else with it. Virginia started off pretty hot. Couple couple big time threes for my man rocking the kid in play. And you see Syracuse here just not going away. Nice little up and under there by Leiden. But Virginia hanging around actually up 12 at this point. Up 11, I'm sorry. And you see Benajay getting the dime. Benajay, he's a real player. This uh, number zero here in orange. He's going to play in the league one day. He's He's that guy that Jimmy Bayheim needed to really step up, take the game under control. And once it seemed, once Syracuse really put that press on Virginia, the Cavaliers just didn't know what to do. They didn't. And, you know, a, a lot of people want to call Syracuse a Cinderella given that they were a 10 seed this year. I refuse to call Syracuse a Cinderella. They are traditionally a powerhouse basketball uh, school. So, you know, while this may come as a, a small surprise, to maybe, you know, the outside of the country, the Fairweather fans that watch only in March Madness, uh, th this Syracuse team is for real. Yeah, they got Jimmy Bayheim, all-time Hall of Famer coach. You can definitely say he outcoached Virginia's head coach to finish this game up. Yeah, and, and now the Orange men are in the Final Four. Who saw that one coming? I did. Really, who saw that one coming? That was not on my bracket whatsoever. Got one more set of highlights here for you. The number one overall seed, Kansas, going down to Villanova this last weekend, and this one, my, it was probably my favorite game of the weekend as uh, Villanova started out hot, never really looked back as they were able to keep that little four or five point cushion on the Jayhawks. And on the other side for the Jayhawks, uh, they really needed Wayne Selden to show up and Perry Ellis, uh, all of 80 years old here, <laughs> still didn't show up. Main reason Kansas lost this one, I'd say. Well, Villanova plays excellent team defense. That's something everybody forgets about this team. And they're from the East Coast, Philadelphia. The 2-1-5 definitely represented by playing fantastic defense. Every time Ellis had the ball, there are three Wildcats surrounding him, making it hard for him. He kicks it out. They're still able to recover and defend a perimeter shot. If Nova keeps playing defense this way and shooting the way that they have, it's a good chance that they could be lifting the trophy at the end of the week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They have a big one coming up against uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. We'll go ahead and get into that on Thursday uh, on our next episode of U Sports Report. But in the meantime, we'll see Kansas here still hanging around. About four and a half minutes left to go here. 
uh, they really needed Devontae Graham, where you can see number four there uh, in white. He fouled out with about three minutes to go. He's really the only one that did anything from three. And here you see Ryan Archie Diakono getting the steal, and that is effectively it for Kansas, the number one overall seed. That's right. Kansas is out. I called Nova in the Final Four. The only team yeah. I got right in the Final Four. At least I got that one. All right, we're going to ask you a couple questions real quick sure. about each team and a player that really needs to do something. Well, I'm going to start off with Syracuse. Um, I say uh, the team goes as this guy goes. Basically a fill in the blank for each team. Michael Benege. This guy, I just talked about him. He averages 18 points a game this season. He averages four assists. Four rebounds. He actually started his career at Duke back when Seth Curry was playing there. Seth, not the great Steph, but uh, you know, just to put in perspective how long ago that was, Benege also led the conference in steals this season, 2.0 per game. That's Chris Paul numbers. And uh, you know, this is, might be my favorite stat. This guy's just an energizer bunny. He plays 38 minutes per game. Wow. That's out of a possible 40. Wow. Out of a possible 40, this guy, he's just absolutely, he's sick. I don't know how else, how else to say it. Earn the coach's trust by playing like that. Absolutely. Yeah. And now moving on to, to North Carolina, Bryce Johnson. This guy, just an absolute animal. He's been going hard all year. He's the one of two uh, unanimous first team all ACC selections. He put up 17 points a game, averaged 10 rebounds. That's a double double you're averaging. Yeah. Uh, you know, with this last game against Notre Dame, he did pick up his 23rd double double of the season, which sets a North Carolina record. Think of all the fantastic big men that they have. Sam Perkins, yeah. Brad Doherty, and he set a North Carolina record. That's fantastic, and he plays with such power. As he well. does, and, and he, the good thing is he steps up when he needs it, when his team needs it the most. Here in the tournament, he's been averaging 21 points a game. But check this out. He shoots 62% from the field, but this is my favorite stat. Per 40 minutes, he averages 15 rebounds. Wow, that's really working the glass and working the boards hard. That, that's what you need to do to win these games, especially in the NCAA tournament. Now, moving along to uh, Villanova. A lot of people would think I'm going to pick Archie Diakono. No, I'm going with Josh Hart. This guy, he's a, he's a junior. He was last season's conference sixth man of the year. He leads the team in scoring 15 points a game and rebounds, almost seven. He's shot 25% of Villanova's shots this season. And uh, he had eight games of 10-plus rebounds. That's fantastic. Playing well, playing great team defense, too. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Archie Diakono, they, they really need him to go. But this guy here is the key for the Wildcats if they want to take it all the way. All right. Now, all my right. last one, uh, of course, Oklahoma. <laughs> Got to go with Buddy Hill. Buddy. It, it's no Good question. Old buddy. Uh, just last game, he set the record for most threes made by an Oklahoma player with eight in a game. Eight, ladies and gentlemen. Just absolutely insane. He had the most points in an Elite Eight game. 37 and last game he also became the Big 12 Conference's second all-time leading scorer but check this out he shoots 50 percent from the field guys and he also leads the nation in most threes made in the season with 146 he leads the NCAA in most threes made per game with over four definitely the player of the year and as a fourth year senior he is stepping up and saying hey my last two games of my college basketball career are going to be incredibly memorable. You know what's memorable? Our dad master, Mr. <laughs> Tyler Ortega. He is the man. We want to thank him so much. That's the college rundown. We're coming up with the high school rundown with Adam Deal. More on the U Sports Report.